You mentioned reading and writing fundamentals. Could you elaborate in the context of OWI? Sure. I mean that any theory of digital response to writing is a theory of instruction. And that theory necessarily deals with reading and writing. In a way, OWI creates a reading problem for students. Think of it this way. Let's take an asynchronous paper cycle. Student receives an assignment, writes an essay in response to that assignment, posts the written response to the teacher. The teacher then reads and then writes about that assignment to the student, provides some kind of feedback and critique. The student receives that written response from the teacher, reads it, interprets it, and hopefully makes some kinds of changes. And we think, you know, if that student is a good reader, he shouldn't have any trouble understanding what the teacher is saying in response and then, in fact, be able to enact um, some kind of, uh, to, it should be able to enact and make changes to the paper based on that guidance that the teacher provided. But I think that's not an accurate scenario for most students. A lot of online students, a lot of um, first year students, developmental writers, non-traditional students or returning students, and non-native speaking students can exhibit particular problems with reading and then using the instructional text about their writing. And we know this when we get a paper back and no revision has occurred or the revision that has occurred is off the mark in terms of what we were hoping to see. A student can be a really good reader of various genres like biography, fiction, nonfiction, lab reports, and even textbooks, but not necessarily be a good reader of instructional writing about his or her own text. Instructional text, especially when it's written about the student's own writing, uses jargon particular to the discipline, and it assumes an ability to put into practice what has been in advised. It involves what I'm calling a cognitive leap between the student's writing and the, and the teacher's response, and then what needs to happen in rewriting. So we wonder, how is this different from a traditional face-to-face -face setting? In a face-to-face -face setting, any written response that we provide to students is developed anticipating a face-to-face -face meeting, um, which allows the student to prompt the teacher to rephrase and reframe the critique by looking at um, the student's uh, blank expression or confused eyes or even hearing a student's question even when the question itself is, is oddly phrased. In an online setting where we don't have the oral or aural or visual signals of student comprehension, then teachers don't necessarily know that a particular student doesn't or cannot understand that response no matter how many times the student reads it. And this is a problem of what I call intention versus interpretation. It's what the, the teacher intends the student to understand, but the student himself um, interprets quite differently, and that leads to a lack of success. So we take this problem a step further. Students don't always know what questions to ask when they're unclear about the feedback that they receive in a face-to-face -face session, and often won't ask questions. But in a face-to-face -face session, we might prompt that Oral transcripts from research show us often a cryptic dialogue between tutor and, teach, uh, tutor and student or teacher and student where there's starts and stops, lack of response, incomplete sentences, interruptions, and then finally some kind of a statement of apparent clarity. At some point, students tend to express some clarity orally and indicate that they're ready to move on to the next steps something has been communicated that brought about that movement. In the online setting, students who are unclear about feedback may have even more trouble expressing their lack of understanding because now they have to use writing to express their problems with the instruction and with their own writing.
the oral, oral visual component is completely gone. And so there's a problem of reading the instructional text and then translating what they've read into something that they can do in writing about that text, which would be like to ask a question of the teacher or tutor, or to write something from it in revision to enact changes. So students must make a challenging cognitive leap from the reading into action. What do students have to read that is difficult, and what makes it especially challenging? Well, I have to smile when you ask that question. Students have to read what their instructors write about their writing, and I think that's challenging in and of itself. There is language in that writing about essays, arguments, expositions, thesis sentences, assertions, topic sentences, content development, organization, and all kinds of sentence level issues. Often there's a thick jargon from our discipline. Students have to figure out the hidden meanings behind time-worn and cliched abbreviations like AWK for awkward and SV for subject-verb disagreement. They have to look at edits and corrections to sentence-level concerns that their teachers have said are not as important as the higher-level issues, but the fact that there are strikeouts and corrections and edits in their writing uh, sort of belies what the teacher has said. Students have to understand the meaning of all these words that they've heard and read about for so many years in application to their own writing without the benefit of the teacher's oral intervention about their writing. Note that most of the time when students have received uh, these kinds of words and exercises about that, these exercises have not been about their own writing. The exercises have been about somebody else's writing in a workbook. So it's very different to take and apply these words and these phrases to what we're writing ourselves. And so I see a problem, a reading problem, in OWI that can strongly affect what students do with the feedback and instruction that teachers, tutors, and even their own peers provide to them. What is the writing problem then? We know students need writing facility, which is the aim of OWI. While I'm quite sure that students need help with reading instructional text and applying it to their own writing, which is in fact the subject and the skill that they're studying, the writing problem isn't theirs. It's the educator. The educator, teacher and tutor owns the writing problem in that much writing instruction conveyed online is alternately overly lengthy and discursive or simply curt and cryptic. There are often uses of conditional and rhetorical language to create a well-intended but false sense of politeness about writing choices that students could make to meet their teacher's goals, um, even when the teacher professes not to want to appropriate the student's writing. But in fact, most of the time, the students ought to make those types of changes. And the writing that the, is produced uses technical terms to name writing behaviors, that without the clear context and pointing to the student's own writing, these terms can be nearly impossible for some students to decode. All of these strategies can be found in the instruction of teachers and tutors across the country, because I've seen some work from teachers and tutors across the country, and all of them require a cognitive leap on the part of the online writing student that can prove impossible for many of them. While the teacher or tutor is quite sure that she has made herself clear and doesn't understand why the student isn't following through, the student similarly is quite sure that he has done so. And this kind of written instruction is one that I would say lacks semantic integrity. Semantic integrity is a term that I use to imply that there is in fact a relationship, a fidelity, between what is intended in the instruction and what the student can interpret from that intention. The online writing conference is all about how to develop online conferences or written response in ways that will help students to decode the instruction that's being provided. Doing so includes a variety of interventional instructional strategies, such as using linguistically direct instead of indirect language, 
writing mini lessons for the student, focusing on the most important or highest order concern for changing that particular text and raising it a degree in terms of skill. Using the student's own writing as the subject of the lesson or the tutorial. Providing ample examples of how to change the writing based on the student's writing and not on an odd example from the, the teacher's past, for example. Modeling revision using the student's own writing and using close or stem sentence procedures, among other types of strategies. The student in this case is the audience, not other teachers who recognize and appreciate the jargon of our discipline. And it may be an unconscious practice, in fact, that we use such jargon when we're responding to students. The personal reply of reader response theory aside, we have to remember that writing, in, that instructional writing is transactional in nature and not expressive or poetic for the purpose. When the student's own text is the specific subject matter rather than grammar rules or some generalities about English or generalities about writing an argument, for example, students can better make the cognitive connection, that cognitive leap, needed to understand what their next steps are in drafting and revision processes.